Okay, good morning, everyone. I apologize for the delay in getting started. Uh, I'm Councilwoman Tamika Isaac Devine, the chair of the CPAC committee, uh, along with Councilman Daniel Rickman and Councilman, Councilman Will Brennan. And so we're gonna call this meeting, committee meeting of the Columbia's Climate Protection Action Committee meeting to order. For uh, Mr. Assistant City Manager. Good morning, Ms. Devine. Um, thanks everybody for being here, appreciate it. Good to see everyone in person. Um, Ms. Wilson sends her regrets that she couldn't be here, but um, she'll certainly be with us this afternoon. Uh, we have one order of business this morning, and um, that is a committee discussion um, for the City of Columbia's Environment and Infrastructure Committee. Um, we have Columbia's Climate Protection Action Committee quarterly update. Um, Ms. Mary Pat Baldoff, our Sustainability Administrator in Public Works, and a presentation by Mr. Robert or Bob Petrulis, who is Vice Chair of our Climate Protection Action Committee. Our Chairwoman, um, Dr. Lori Zielkowski, is, is out of town. She's not able to join us this morning, but Bob's done a really good job putting a presentation together, and he's going to deliver that for us now. Thank you. Ms. Hammond, do we need to officially call the roll, or we? Acknowledge the members who are okay. present. So I think we're good to go. Thank you. Good morning. Good morning. Thank you so much for being here. Thank you. I'm looking forward to uh, updating you on, on what the committee's been doing for the last uh, quarter. Um, as uh, Clint mentioned, I'm the vice chair of the committee, and uh, Lori is out of town at the moment. So um, I guess we'll get started. Next slide. Thank you. Yeah, uh, so we're, we have three items really to talk about today. Two of them are just uh, pretty quick updates, and the third will take the uh, majority of our time, I think. Uh, the first is the quarterly webinar that we've been doing. We just did our second one, and uh, so we'll tell you a little bit about that. Uh, also, um, uh, members of the committee and others have been participating in procurement uh, cohorts that are looking at um, uh, procuring clean energy for the city in, in various ways. Uh, so we'll talk just a little bit about that. And then the main item is our Ready for 100 Consultants Report by uh, Anthony Artuso. So um, just to, uh, to recap a little bit, our mission and current priorities uh, really have to do with the Ready for 100 pledge and uh, looking at how the city can reduce grease, uh, greenhouse gas emissions and uh, adapt to climate change that we're anticipating over the next 10, 15, 20 years. Um, so uh, I think the, the main point of this, uh, 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 this uh, consultant's report is to help us frame the, uh, the major issues and our priorities for uh, dealing with, uh, with climate change and emission reduction. Um, so let's see, next, thank you. Uh, we uh, did our quarterly uh, webinar on, um, uh, on the uh, 17th of June last month, and um, this one, the, uh, uh, the theme was keeping it cool. We, were, we featured a number of city services that are available to low-income folks uh, to help them uh, keep cool as we see more extreme heat. Um, and uh, so far we've had 67 views <laughs> of, the, uh, of the webinar. Hope to, uh, to do some more, to see more of those. Uh, and I just point out uh, that uh, Tamara Warren, who's back here, um, is, uh, is kind of the host of the uh, webinars and has been doing a wonderful job. Um, next webinar is going to be in September, and we're thinking that perhaps a back to school uh, theme would be a good one, uh, both talking about ways that students are already engaging with, uh, with climate change issues and also possibly uh, talking about how teachers can address climate change in their classrooms. Um, Bob, where is that webinar living right now? Is it on the city's YouTube channel? Or? It is, yeah. It is? Okay. 
um, is it um, periodically being shared via our social media? Do we know? Um, you, Mayor Pat said yes. Okay. It is. Okay. So yeah. Um, so, uh, let's go ahead to the procurement cohorts. Uh, folks are, uh, members of the committee and others are participating in three major cohorts. Uh, two of them are sponsored by the World Resources Institute and one by the, uh, ICLEI, uh, Local Governments for Sustainability. Uh, the renewable energy procurement cohort is really focused on uh, developing plans for uh, utility scale solar uh, and uh, the other two projects are looking at um, uh, sustainability and uh, mobile um, electric vehicle charging. So, uh, and we'll keep you updated as we as, as those uh, cohorts uh, progress. So, um, as I said, the major, uh, the major time that we're gonna spend today will be focused on the Ready for 100 Consultants Report uh, from Anthony Artuso and Brightview Energy. We were able to hire him uh, with funding from the Sierra Club and uh, over the last uh, three or four months, we were able to, uh, he was able to produce this report for us to uh, help us frame the Ready for 100 uh, uh, pledge and how we might go about uh, addressing that. Let's uh, go on to the, okay. Um, so we had four guiding principles and goals that uh, the committee has been talking about. Those are uh, that we wanna keep energy costs as affordable as possible. We want uh, power to be as reliable as it is now. Uh, preference for local facilities. So if we can develop local uh, uh, solar facilities and other uh, clean, gener clean energy generation, uh, we'll be doing, we'll, we'll prefer that and that the benefits should be spread equitably throughout the community. So uh, uh, people at all income levels, uh, geographic locations within the city and so forth. The, uh, let's go ahead. Uh, the um, Report suggests five priorities, and I'm outlining them here and detailing them a little bit in the, in the next few slides. A um, couple of things to keep in mind. One is that the lead times for developing, so, uh, developing clean energy infrastructure and uh, moving forward in, with, the, with the pledge really are um, pretty long, and at this point, the city is making decisions that will be still in place by 2036, which is when the, the goal uh, uh, is, you know, that's, that's when the 100% clean energy goal uh, is supposed to be achieved. So we really need to start now uh, thinking about how are we going to uh, implement these things. Um, we also need to, so we, we need to really consider the climate impacts of the new, new acquisitions immediately. Um, so our, our uh, priorities, there are five priorities. Um, they are to, uh, to really begin a dialogue with the city council and the environment and infrastructure committee about uh, affirming the city's commitment and really clarifying what that means. There are a lot of uh, practical questions about implementation. You know, what counts as clean energy? Uh, uh, you know, what are our priorities? How, broad, how broadly do we want this to apply in the city and so forth? So, so there are a lot of questions that would be helpful to, uh, uh, to address, starting with this committee and then uh, uh, formalized with the whole city council at some point. Uh, 
we also want to uh, really talk about how we can collaborate with stakeholders like Dominion Energy, other governments, uh, other community stakeholders. Uh, we're talking about utility scale solar projects and those would be probably phased in over time. There may be other uh, you know, hydropower or other kinds of uh, clean energy as well that we might want to discuss. Uh, electrifying or, or cleaning up the transportation sector is an important uh, aspect of this. And we also think that we need to have some kind of community accountability with some kind of a dashboard or other way of reporting progress on these goals. Um, so maybe we could go to the next slide, thanks. Um, so I guess, you know, today is a good day to start a, uh, a conversation with this committee to, uh, to really start to, to think through some of these issues. And we're hoping that, uh, that over the next few months we can continue that dialogue and really start to, uh, to make some, get some clarity around some of these questions. Um, we also think that uh, beyond clarifying some of the policy issues, we also want to establish some milestones, uh, strategies to, uh, to meet those milestones. And uh, so that as we move forward, we've got some interim goals that we can uh, work toward. Um, so we would propose that CPAC could take the lead in developing a draft resolution for the council to, uh, uh, that would address those issues in consultation with the uh, Environment and Infrastructure Committee. Um, so that's, uh, that's item number one. Uh, our next step uh, would be constructive collaborations we want to meet the goal of 100% clean energy by 2036, and there are lots of people that, uh, that we can work with that can help us get there. Uh, and certainly the power company is one major player that we need to address. Um, there are uh, uh, lots of other institutions that could, uh, could work with us, major institutions like the University of South Carolina, uh, school districts, uh, major employers, and so forth, who could be getting on board with this. Uh, one of the quick things that I think we could see as a positive win will be the streetlight uh, LED conversion that's in progress now. Uh, and uh, we certainly can tout that as a, as a step forward. Um, thank you. Uh, the uh, cohorts that I mentioned, one of, the, one of the cohorts that I mentioned earlier is working on this uh, question of solar projects. And uh, that's gonna be an important contribution both in terms of contributing directly toward the clean energy goal, but also by uh, being a visible uh, step in the process so that we can talk about with the community. Uh, So, and I think the question is whether, you know, how much collaboration we can do with Dominion Energy, how much of this might be done by the city itself, uh, whether there are other players that we would want to be involved, that would we, want, we would want to involve in this, uh, in this process. So, uh, and, and we're likely to see a, a phased approach over the next 15 years to help us get there. Transportation sector, uh, one obvious step that is in the direct control of the city is uh, using some alternative fuels for uh, the city's fleet. That could include electrifying vehicles, it could include other uh, clean energy sources. So uh, uh, that's an important and again, a very visible uh, thing and it's also something that, that has a fairly long lead time because vehicles that are being purchased now will be in use for a number of years into the future. So we, we really need to start thinking about how can we uh, how can we move forward on that. And I know that the um, uh, that Public Works Department is working on on some plans to experiment with uh, uh, electric vehicles. Um, so we need to expand those things and really start to implement 
at, at scale. Um, there's also the possibility or the opportunity to install EV charging stations in various places. I know there are a couple in uh, different parking facilities downtown and other places. Uh, those could be expanded and those might also be a source of revenue for the city. Uh, uh, we're, we, we do know that Dominion wants to get into uh, EV charging stations, so there must be some money available involved, so you know, maybe, uh, maybe the city can uh, connect into that. Uh, the, um, the other thing is really to, to consider or to, to work with uh, Comet and uh, kind of regional transit to think about how, uh, how to improve the efficiency of transit and, and um, availability of, of public transit to get people into downtown and out and so forth. Uh, and hopefully with, uh, with electric buses or, or some other form of, uh, of uh, clean transportation. Um, and then finally, the uh, metrics and monitoring. Uh, we think that we probably need a, some kind of a dashboard that would be both public facing and also uh, facing to uh, city departments that uh, could help to uh, uh, just make it clear what progress we're making and uh, make it easy to see what our goals are and where we are in relation to those goals. Uh, so those are, those are the major points of the, uh, of the report. Uh, you'll see on the, on the last page before the, uh, before the references that there's a table that summarizes the recommendations that have been made in the report. So that may be helpful in terms of as you're, um, uh, as you're looking through the report. Uh, uh, that frames it nicely in terms of getting those uh, kind of summarizing uh, what's in there. Um, so the question for the committee, uh, I put on the slide, what, is, what assets exist within the city that can move this agenda forward? And I like that question, but I also, I had another one <laughs> that came up as I was uh, thinking about this yesterday, and that is really to ask you, um, what does this committee need from CPAC that can help you uh, uh, frame these issues both for, for the E&I committee and also for the city council? So those are two questions that we might, uh, we might address a little bit today. Yes, sir, Mr. Rickerman. Um, first of all, thank you all for all the hard work. I mean, the reports that we've been getting over the last year have been amazing. Uh, I think the committee has just really dove in and, and helped. I did glance through this report by the consultant, and I was glad to hear you talk about alternative sources because this is calling for, a, the report actually calls for 100% electrical vehicles and this and that. I don't think that is a, a, a realistic piece because there are other options out there because of the strengths that heavy equipment and everything needs. Europe is way ahead of us um, in this, and you know we we have sources like recycled fuel that can create a methane gas that's not coming from the earth, but recapturing mm -hmm. waste material that is a carbon neutral when it's CNG. Those options, you know, solar's intermittent, so we need to put projects together. Um, which I was glad to hear you say that because I do think those are important aspects and things that we have control of. We can recycle our food waste. Their, their anaerobic digestion can be part of wastewater plant that we're already capturing methane and we could capture more and use that as a fuel source. You know, the one thing I would add in here that I think is important that we ought to talk about is the grid itself because nowhere in here, if we electrify so much and have so much coming in, we're gonna need grid upgrades. We're gonna need distribution upgrades and everything because our system would not be able to handle this in its current state. So as we're doing that, we need to be thinking about how we're gonna distribute that power. Is the grid upgrades available? Um, as we talk about large scale solar, which I think is a great option um, you know, believe it or 
not people like Walmart and other places are doing 150 megawatts out, you know, they're using the carbon offsets and everything else to neutralize their footprint and make mm -hmm. a difference. And it's not so much about the dollar amounts because they're selling it for avoided cost, but there's ways to structure it. But the intermittence of the solar, we have to combine with some other alternatives so we can levelize it because battery storage can get very expensive. Um, but doesn't mean there are other ways we can't capture solar. Solar thermal is something I saw in here that wasn't talked about too. So when you talk about housing, you talk about buildings, we can store hot water. We've been doing it for years with water heaters. But if we did that in all public buildings and started looking at some of the obtainable housing options we're talking about and incorporating that, all of these steps could help achieve that. Um, when you talk about the assets that exist within, we have a hydro plant that when we get the canal that we could, we could really use that. We've discussed it internally about channeling that power instead of selling it, channeling it back to the water treatment facility where we could offset. You know, then you look at, at a wastewater plant. Um, you think about capturing all the waste heat that we generate off all this machinery, if it's in the hydro plant or if it's at the water treatment plants or wherever, we haven't ever captured that. May not be great in volumes, but every little offset gets us closer to where we want to be. Um, I'm really, I can't great. wait to dive into this more. Great. Uh, you know, this is part of my world that I live in, so I'm very excited about it. Um, and I think our commitment, I think the commitment from the city is definitely there. We just need to keep Great. chipping it off block by block. Um, and, I, and I think we can get there. But I, I, would, I would suggest that we try to look at the distribution and the grid and everything else because we're going to have to do that together with Dominion. And as we're, we're in the middle of franchise agreements now, discussions, with all the utilities that touch the city, we need to make sure we incorporate this. And some of these strategies and projections and opportunities in there as well, I think this would be very good for us to incorporate this as we have these discussions moving forward so that everybody knows that we're planning, our goal is to get there. How we get yeah. there, we don't know 100% because obviously technology is changing and everything else, but I do think we have a lot of tools it, that we can utilize today, and I think they're only going to get better. Um, Thank you for the for those uh, remarks, and I think the the uh, discussion of uh, looking at the at the grid is a uh, is is uh, is really important too. So I, I appreciate your putting that on our plate. Um, yeah, speaking for myself, and I think this is probably reflective of the committee. Uh, I don't think we're any of us are particularly doctrinaire in terms of um, uh, uh, believing that certain solutions are are the exclusive solutions. So I think we're really open to uh, to looking at you know not putting anything off the table uh, and and moving forward as much as we can with with um, solutions that can be implemented that build on existing strengths and um, and really. Uh, provide benefits for the widest possible uh, group of citizens in the city. So. Mr. Brennan? Mr. Petrolis, thank you so much for your, uh, your time today and your energy. Um, very, very uh, deep dive with this study, and, and we appreciate your time. I want to talk to you and get your, your feedback on public engagement when it comes to these important mm -hmm. topics. I think you mentioned 67 views of the latest uh, YouTube. I watched it. It was, it was fantastic, by the way. Uh, I know Thank Columbia you. Water and our public <laughs> works and our city marketing staff do a great job of pushing it out there. I, I, if I could uh, interrupt you just a second, just mention that uh, Justin, who's running the cameras back here, has been uh, really important uh, in terms of good. making yes. this happen. Agreed. So, um, To that point, I wanted to ask you about, you mentioned this dashboard. Um, mm -hmm. uh, and that's a wonderful way to engage the public. I read some of these metrics. What, what is, what's your take on what are some metrics that could connect with the everyday citizen to get them more engaged in these topics uh, that, that come, come across you know, CPAC's um, committee and presented to us as we, as we, we truly want to go in the path of, 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 of reaching these uh, sustainability goals? Well, 
part of the point of the of the uh, dashboard is to do a little public education as well as uh, as well as report on progress. Uh, so I think if we have clearly articulated benchmarks and goals, and then we have clear ways of uh, reporting progress toward those goals, that's what the uh, what the dashboard would be able to do. Um, we know the big goal, which is 100% uh, clean energy by 2036, but uh, what does that mean in terms of uh, between now and then? You know, what does that mean for three years from now? What does that mean in terms of, um, uh, you know, all these different sectors that we've been talking about? Uh, and I, so I think I, I'm not ready at this point, I don't think the committee's ready to, uh, to propose specific uh, measures or or things that should be on the dashboard, uh, but I think the the point is to engage both this committee, the uh, uh, the city, and uh, and the public, which is what we've been trying to do with the webinars, uh, in in really helping uh, helping us understand our progress and kind of celebrate progress when we can well uh, so uh, as I say I'm, I'm I don't think we're ready to uh, to say we should have you know wonderful. these four things right 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 um, it'd be wonderful to get feedback from Brightview Energy mm -hmm. about what other municipalities um, are seeing yeah. as successful uh, metrics and engagement uh, points yes in fact uh, we were looking at a dashboard from Virginia I'm trying to remember if it was Charlottesville or or uh, the state or what but um, uh, we were looking at something like that as a model uh, that would help us be able to point to that and say, well, you know, if you want to know what's going on, here it is. Wonderful. Lots of potential. And um, it's just pulling the pieces together. So thank you. Just a couple things I made notes. Awesome report. Thank you so much. Um, and I, I appreciate all the work that uh, CPAC has been doing. Uh, I think when, to Mr. Rickman's point, when we suggested last last year to keep quarterly reports, I think it helps us. Um, so to your point of, of what we need from you, I think having these quarterly reports and being able to uh, see progress and have discussions, I think maybe also coming out of this, and I suggest to my colleagues on the committee that um, you know we, we do our report out to regular council, but maybe we also um, identify metrics, and then we can make sure that as Council um, is getting reports as we're doing um, uh, whatever it is, procurement or anything else. Um, Mr. Sheely, you know how we also identify where it is in our Envision 2020 plan. We can also note whether or not it hits the metrics that we've set here. Um, so that's just a suggestion. Um, I will say, um, and, and this is probably already on Mary Pat's um, list and we're, we're doing, but uh, in, in the American Jobs Plan, um, if and when it passes. Uh, NLC is advocating for, and I, from my conversations in Washington last week, uh, it should include um, the renewal of energy conservation block grants. Um, and I think that we need to certainly be in position to understand what projects we have on the table, what things that we want to do but haven't been able to afford, that we can utilize that resource to, to move forward on some of these things. Um, I love the dashboard idea as well. And I was thinking, um, and I haven't seen Charlottesville's. I've seen a couple. National League of Cities has um, a lot of resources for uh, what cities are doing as far as um, energy conservation and, and where the cities who have made the pledge, where they are in progress. So we can certainly try and get some of those ideas as well. But I did, um, I was thinking when you mentioned dashboard, if we also could potentially have a repository uh, for our partners or other people within the community that are doing things so that we understand who is doing what. Um, and you know, Mr. Rickman um, mentioned, um, you know, what other groups are doing. That all goes to our region um, moving forward on our goals. So if we had an opportunity where it wasn't just what the city is doing, but what other partners are doing as well, and we can kind of have a repository, people can say, you know, this is a project that's going on, this is what I'm doing. Um, I know in after we finish this report, uh, Mary Pat and Ms. Warren, you, you guys might want to um, just brief the committee on the press conference we had a couple weeks ago and the partnership 
um, with uh, Keep the Midlands Beautiful. But, you know, that's a smaller project, but it certainly is um, goes along the, the lines of environmental justice issues and um, everything else. So we're even small groups that are doing things that we had an opportunity for them to report to us what they're doing and we can include those on there. Um, and then the last thing I, I wrote down was uh, as far as partners, uh, we have certainly found a great partner um, in our response to COVID relief in, in DHEC. Uh, I know that they are really pushing out a lot as far as environmental justice. I think there's some grants available and Ms. Warren may know more than I do about this, but um, I would like to see maybe there are opportunities for us to partner with DHEC and some of the monies that they're allocating to environmental justice issues and look at what items that we'd like to partner on and see if we can move, whether that is community engagement and education or whether it's smaller projects. But I think that there's certainly an untapped resource there. So, thank you. Mr. Rickham. Uh, I just wanted to add, because um, the, the chairwoman brought a thing is the partnership, which, you know, we talked a little bit about, she mentioned the, the energy block grants that come out, but there's also going to be a lot of incentives that roll out uh, to encourage more private sector growth in energy. And those are opportunities that we could leverage through partnerships, leasebacks, and other things that help us move forward much quicker because they're going to be able to take advantage of incentives, tax credits, and things to advance our goal that we are not going to be able to. So I do think we need to include that, seeking those right partners in every one of those levels to go with it because if you remember, 10 years ago when they rolled out the program and they had the ITC, it was a cash grant that came back. And so suddenly you saw this massive uh, play out there of all these alternative energy uh, production plants and everything moving forward much quicker. Mm -hmm. And that was, we couldn't take advantage as a city, but private sector could. So I do think leveraging those partnerships in every level is going to be something we probably need to add to our list of as a working committees to to look at and say, all right, here's our chance to leverage this and move something up five years or 10 years on the investment scale. That's a great point. Um, and I would mention that we quarterly have a meeting with uh, with stakeholder partners, uh, other groups in, in uh, the area that are working on uh, related projects. So, uh, so we're starting to get some information from, from those folks uh, on a quarterly basis. And we could certainly summarize some of that perhaps and, and pass it on. Um, and I was just thinking about a, a quote from Malcolm Baldridge that I remember from years ago who said that, you know, the mark of organizational capacity is the ability to exploit opportunities that, uh, that come along. And I think, um, you know, one of the things that that makes sense to me is to think about how do we build organizational capacity so that when uh, you know grant programs come up or opportunities to partner with uh, with other entities in the city or whatever uh, that we're ready to jump on those and, and make them happen. That was our only agenda item, but um, Mayor Pat, do you want to briefly, or, or Ms. Warren, can one of y'all just briefly um, inform the committee of the project with? Um, Keep the Midlands beautiful. Well, good morning. Um, so I am Tamara Warren, and in this capacity, I'm not speaking on behalf of uh, CPAC, but I am one of the consultants for this particular project that is taking place. And so Keep the Midlands Beautiful has a grant in collaboration with Bank of America as well as the Arbor Day Foundation which they're basically looking to do beautification projects within the city of Columbia, but specifically with the North Main area. And so the partnership is outside of that grant is going to be with the Department of Juvenile Justice and as well as Naraya, which is a community organization connected with um, Mount Zion Baptist Church in Casey. So we're looking at a group of about 20 youth. And so the idea is to make sure that they're learning about environmental awareness through actual beautification projects within the city. Some of the locations are going to be um, in the near Columbia College, and so if not quite on their premise in the immediate area, as well as they're gonna be doing environmental justice as well as awareness sessions. And so they get to learn about the history, 
how is it applicable to their particular communities, what roles they play, as well as different ways in which they could fight against environmental injustice or racism. And so they had that opportunity through the curriculum that has been put in place. Um, the actual beautification projects are going to be led by Caleb King, which I believe is a your forestry department. And so he and his staff are going to give them training on exactly what to do and then give them hands-on um, assistance out there. And so it's going to take place, the first session starts July 31st, but it's going to be from now until November. And there's going to be multiple activities that will take place outside of working with the youth they will also be engaged with the community to help them know what they have learned and how it's going to be applicable to them as well. All right. Thank you. Thank you so much. Um, that is all on our agenda. Mr. Rickman, did you have anything? Mr. Brennan? Okay. Well, with nothing else, um, thank you all so much for um, everything that you are doing, and we will keep this moving forward. Um, and Mr. Sheely, is there anything else for us? Um, Councilwoman Devine, just, just a couple of, of finishing points. Great discussion. Thank you, Bob. Committee, appreciate the work y'all have done. Um, I would encourage you, if you have time, to read the full report. There's a lot of good information in there, but I think the committee did a very good job of, of boiling down what's really important, at least for, for our region and, and our group, and, um, but, but a lot of good information in there. Um, we are working well together. I think you'll see some momentum on the resolution, the draft resolution moving forward. I think we'll meet again in October for our quarterly update. So you can expect us to discuss that even more. Um, part of that centers around defining the magnitude of the problem that we're trying to solve. And so we've, we've made a lot of progress in looking at you know, working with CPAC and looking at where is Dominion going to be organically as they move toward clean energy by 2050? What does that mean for us from a, from a power supply in 2036? And, and so we've been talking about that and building on what they're going to be doing, but accelerating that where we can. And so we're having a lot of discussions about that. Uh, Bob mentioned the procurement cohort. That has really brought several folks together to talk about clean energy and learn about how other communities have worked collaboratively to procure clean energy. So that's been a good discussion. I would encourage you to reach out to your colleagues um, at the county and also working with um, contacts that we have at the educational institutions and school districts. The more folks that are involved, the better because this footprint in, in impacts all of us. And then we look forward to our, to our briefing again in October. So thank you so much for your time. Thank you. So if nothing else, Ms. Hammond, we are adjourned. Thank you.